Ah. Another thing I'm going to be doing here in a minute, after I hit the in, I will be doing a hard reset. What that will do is reset the um, encounter list, so when I get on my ship, I will fight a particular battle, which has very high XP and gold yields. Sharks have a lot of hit points, and they do a lot of damage, but they don't drop a lot in terms of experience in gold, so I would rather not fight them if I don't have to. So we're going to do a hard reset here by pushing the little power button. Isn't that cute? And we should get into a fight with some Kaizoku. There they are. And so I will just fight this battle until I'm level 5. And that should only take a couple minutes. I think Cole will have to go to about level 8 before it's time to take that nunchuck off. And just let him fight with his bare hands. Um, he can be on the back line and do lots of damage. It doesn't matter. Because uh, black belts have telescopic fists that can just, like a stretch arm strongly, just launch to hit monsters wherever they happen to be. No, I'm getting a lot of money, but... Okay, I've got enough money now. Good. But they don't drop quite a lot of experience. For some reason, I was misremembering the amount of experience they drop. See, I know everything about this game, but not all the knowledge is in the brain at the same time when I need to access it. Go figure. So, I don't want to fight sharks and things. I would like to fight like these battles like with the Sahags. I think they give better experience than the sharks do. But one of the reasons I want to stay on the ocean instead of going inland is because the monsters here, even the ones with a lot of hit points, tend to take a lot of damage from the Lit spell, which is the only spell that Ryo has right now. First, let's go ahead and buy Lit 2, just to say that I have it. It's in the Black Magic Shop. Ryo will learn Lit 2. Okay. Um, how much freaking leveling am I going to have to subject you guys to? Eh, eh, one more level should do it. Guys, this is why I don't let's play RPGs. This is it. I'm not going to cut it out. Y'all asked for it. Well, technically, only like John B. asked for it, and y'all are just subjected to it. But So, okay, thank him for all of this beautiful leveling up footage that you now have to watch. I mean, you don't have to watch it, I guess. You can just skip ahead to the next video if you want, but... I wanted to get, make sure to get that uh, Ka Kaizoku fight in. First of all, just to show off my knowledge of the encounter list, which because I'm so awesome, but... Also because I wanted to buy that Lit 2 spell. That Lit 2 spell is going to be what gets me through the next dungeon. And you know what? I might actually be better off just fighting Kaizokus because I don't think these battles are going to give a great deal more experience. So I might as well stick to the plan and just do a hard reset and an in stay after every fight. Sometimes you get a fight with like five Kaizokus. That'll be a lot more experience, I guess. So that'll be good to have. Gotta get rid of these little green monsters first, though. There was a time, and I know that many of you may not believe this, but there was a time where this was, like, the best graphics available on a home console. Like, these graphics blew my mind as a child. I couldn't believe it. This is, like, the longest-lived Sahag probably in history. Because my guys keep missing him. Once Will and Jim, once their hit rate gets up to 32, they'll have two hits with the Scimitar. That means that, first of all, they'll be doing double damage. And second of all, they will miss much less frequency. Because in order to entirely miss... Power. In order to completely miss the uh, monsters, you have to miss with every single one of your individual attacks. And it is more difficult to miss with two attacks than it is to miss with one attack. That's the idea, at least. And I probably won't need the money that I'm getting from these Kaizokus for anything. There's not quite a lot to buy for this team. Most of what I'll use throughout the game I'll just find in treasure boxes as I go. Even Ryo won't have much in terms of... Um, magic spells. I'm not going to fill out a spell list, because why bother? I buy Lit instead of Fire at the beginning, because... So I can farm on these little sea monster guys and get the increased damage from that. None of the other level 1 spells are worth using. I could get the Ice spell. It's a level 2 spell, but again, kind of not worth using. 
So probably lit, lit 2 and fast might be it for Rio. Until I get to the end of the game and just have way more money than sense, and maybe I'll buy something stupid, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Level 4, I don't believe that gives them their second attack yet. I'll check real quick. Or after I put Jim back in the front row. Just in case that I was wrong about everything. Nope, not quite. Hit percent, still only 29. So one more level up ought to do it. And we're going to be fighting for a little while, I guess. Ogres would yield more experience. So maybe I will... F eh, yeah, fighting around Elfland, though, this is a good fight. Going down and fighting around Elfland, though, is tricky because things there can poison you, and then each time you get poison, you got to spend 75 gold to undo the poison. One thing you'll also notice is I'm spreading my attacks around. I'm not just piling all my guys up on the same monster. That's because Final Fantasy does not automatically retarget. For example, if Cole kills a Kaizoku and then Jim tries to attack that same Kaizoku, he will instead swing his sword at the empty space that the Kaizoku previously occupied, which, as you can expect, is not very effective. However, what this the game is doing is it's training you to efficiently spread out your attacks, so you get a sense for how much damage each of your characters can do consistently, and how many you have to throw at each monster before he dies, and that it makes battles go by more efficiently. Let me contrast this to, uh, say, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger has an auto-target, okay? And you can just press the attack button, and your guys will just attack just the nearest monster until it's dead, and it'll move immediately on to the next monster. You just hold down the A button and get to the whole game like that. But what happens is you'll have a strong character like Chrono, who can conceivably kill monsters in one or two shots, and then a weak character like Luka, who needs two or three shots. What'll happen is Luka will shoot a monster, get it like 80% dead, and then Chrono will finish it off. Well, that's very inefficient because it's wasting Chrono's strong attack. What you want to do is have Chrono attack another monster and take off a big chunk of his hit, hit points, and then have Luka on her next turn finish off the already weakened monster. So if you go into, say, Chrono Trigger, I just saved the game, and I want to power cycle. There we go. If you go into Chrono Trigger with a battle mindset the way Final Fantasy works, in that you're going to spread your attacks around, really, just the one guy, huh? I don't even need to waste a lightning spell on him. Um, you will get to the whole game more efficiently because you'll be using each of your individual attacks to the best effect. You'll get through battles faster because you won't have so many wasted turns where Chrono can deal 200 damage to a monster that's only got 30 hit points left. Final Fantasy is the same principle, except this game you're forced to play that way because if you play any other way, you'll just be get a lot of ineffective hits and you'll waste a lot of turns. So... I'm not saying one method or another is better or worse or whatever, I'm just saying that that's the way this game works and that's why I'm doing it this way. Level 4 might be the most boring level in the game for this party because I've got to get to level 5 before anybody can do real damage or cast lit 2. That's when this will get exciting. That's when this shizzle will be off the hizzle, so to speak. I don't want to get your hopes up with the shizzles and the hizzles and whatnot. Ugh. I had a brownie earlier, so I'm still eating, or I'm still drinking the last of my glass of milk. Which is delicious. And then after that, I will move on to this unopened can of delicious ice cold Pepsi. Uh, so we got some more lightning spells here. So this here, this grinding out of just monsters getting experience points, this is what a lot of people think Final Fantasy is mostly like. And if they're just watching this one video in this series, I probably will not have done anything to disavow you of that opinion. But you will see that after this scene, once I get to level 5 and I can use Lit 2, and my fighters are getting multiple hits, the game will start to go a lot smoother, just because my damage output will be so much greater. But for right now, it's boring, and I don't have anything to fill the time with, really. I could speed it up some more, but anything above 150% makes the music sound really atrocious. And really, we just don't want that, do we? Hooray, how about a 5 Kaizoku fight would be gorgeous right now. I could walk up to the Temple of Fiends, and there's a couple pieces of armor. Really? The one guy again, huh? Damn it. 
Um, there's some armor up there, I can, like some gloves or a hat or something, but really, it's not. they're not worth getting. All the armor that I'll probably wear in the game will come out of treasure boxes as we go. <clears throat> Monsters strike first. Well, that's just dandy! Level 5 cannot come fast enough. Man, you know what? When I recorded this earlier, I played for about an hour, and I got to level 5 really quickly, just because the game gave me lots of Kaizokus at once, and oh, it was so much better. But nope, not today. Today, we must endure this. You see also there's a lot of variance in the amount of damage that magic does. Like, sometimes that lit spell hits for 17 damage, and sometimes it hits for like 60 damage, and that can cause a lot of problems. There's a lot of randomness in this game, and I don't like randomness in my games, but I played Final Fantasy like a long time before um, I developed the distaste for it. So... Yeah, that's probably the third misconception about this game, is what, which leads to making people believe you have to do a lot of leveling up. You know, I'm actually going to... Level 4, I've got to kind of gang up all these guys a little bit. It's because, okay, they'll go into a dungeon, and they won't be successful, and they'll think, okay, well, I wasn't successful in the dungeon, I must not be strong enough, I should go out and kill monsters for 6 hours. When really... It's not that they weren't high enough level to be in the dungeon they were in, it's just that they were not lucky that time. They just got a bad roll. They got a couple bad encounters, or uh, the monsters got a bad roll of crits, or whatever. A lot of times, if you save outside of a dungeon, it is much, much faster to just reset and try again than it would be to go out and start leveling up from scratch. So you're going to be seeing a lot of that in this Let's Play. A lot of me just throwing myself at dungeons. Thanks for killing my black mage. That was beautiful. I'm glad I've got to revive him now. Yep, these low-level scenes are pretty tough with this party. If I had a white mage in this group, I would go directly to the Marsh Cave and fight the Zoidbergs. Just because I could put her in the front of the party and have her cast the Ruse spell on herself, and then none of the Zoidbergs would be able to hit her. But that did not occur... Actually, I prefer this, because once I get over this little hump with this party, I will be beyond the point where I would need a white mage for anything else ever. Let's hit the inn! How close am I on leveling? I'm getting there! Once I get to level 5, guys! The other problem with leveling up around Elfland is that... Oops, I just reset. I didn't power cycle. There, that's a power cycle. 